everybody, welcome back to the garage and sorry for a slow week. It's been kind of busy around here. I've got a lot going on with the holidays. Everybody's been busy. Uh, I had some plans for some other stuff this week as far as videos go, but I had a friend in need that needed me to work on their car and get some stuff sorted out. A uh, little hint, if you don't have dielectric grease and contact cleaner sitting around in your garage, it's always good to have some of that stuff around whenever it comes to electrical problems. Uh, but today we are talking about open loop and closed loop and how it relates to each other to the tuning process and then we'll also briefly talk about uh, short-term and long-term fuel trims. So this is going to be a little bit of a shorter video and this is all purely informational. The big thing that you need to know going into this is why we uh, don't use narrow band to uh, oxygen sensors to tune. And so I've got a video, I'll post a link up into the corner that already kind of goes into that into detail, talks about why we want to use wideband. And as we explain open loop and closed loop, that'll make more sense. It kind of makes sense in that video specifically from the technical standpoint about you having higher resolution data to work with, but let's look at open loop and closed loop. The big things about that is open loop and closed loop, which can be confusing. I used to get confused about this back in the day. Open loop is whenever there is none of the auxiliary kind of sensors in, in play versus your fuel map. And that's not completely true. That's a dumbed down, simplified version. But closed loop is whenever we use things like the O2 sensors to adjust fueling. So as you know from watching the other videos in the tuning series that we have a math uh, curve and a VE table on most of our applications. And that's what we consider the base fueling tables. It, we're either in math or in speed density based on a bunch of qualifiers, but whenever we are fueling, we are fueling off those base tables. Then we have a bunch of supplemental tables that have multipliers, uh, variables, things like that. Those do the additional fueling when need be. In particular is closed loop. Closed loop is a system that looks at your uh, your desired air to fuel ratio or your uh, EQ ratio and then factors in the narrow band sensors to see whether or not we are meeting that uh, goal. When we're not meeting that goal then it will make adjustments on top of your base map. It's not changing your base map though it, and so that's where short-term and long-term fuel trims come in. Short-term fuel trims are the direct data from the O2 sensors whenever it is being compared versus the desired EQ ratio or your desired, your commanded AFR. So if your commanded AFR is 14.7 or 1, and that's a little other secret for you, O2 sensors read lambda, so another reason that we don't want to deal with AFR, but if you're trying to hit 1 on the EQ ratio and that O2 sensor says, oh hey man, uh, you're actually running a little bit lean it puts a mark in your short-term fuel trim saying, hey, we're lean. And as those build up, hey, we're lean, hey, we're lean. As we keep on hitting lean in that one section of that table, your long-term fuel trim says, okay, I'm going to richen up that cell on the map. And so here's your base map. Here's your long-term fuel trim map on top of it. It adds, you know, 1% fuel or something. So that keeps on happening on your long-term fuel trims until your short terms start coming back down towards zero. Whenever your short-term fuel trims reach zero, the long-term says, okay, I found how much additional fuel I need to add or how much fuel I need to take away from the base map to reach stoic on this vehicle. That sounds awesome, right? Well, we run into issues anytime that we're not commanding one EQ, you know, or one lambda on the EQ ratio. The reason being is that narrow band O2 sensors are only good at reading around one. They say, hey, we're richer than one, hey, we're leaner than one. They can't really tell you how much richer or how much leaner than they are. And so because of that, whenever we get into power enrichment, boost, wide open throttle, all of those situations where we are going to be commanding, say that 0.85 uh, lambda, your O2 sensors don't work. They will still try to work if you allow them. If you were to tweak your closed loop tables and allow that thing to keep on operating during power enrichment, which people do to allow uh, short term and long term fuel trims tuning, which is a terrible idea, those things don't read accurately. That's why we want to use a wideband, specifically because 
the narrow band O2 sensors are not reliable in the area where we are most prone to causing damage to the engine while tuning. Keep that in mind. If you want to go out there and grab one of those tuning guys that says, hey, you can do this with short-term fuel trims, you are very likely going to cause some damage to your engine because you are utilizing a tool that even the factory disables in those higher RPM ranges. And that's why. That's why we also disable those whenever we tune uh, anything, speed density or math. The idea behind that is, is we want to get all of the piggyback stuff out of the picture. We want to be tuning the base maps. Then we can re-enable a lot of these other systems. The cool thing about it is with speed, speed density, whenever we uh, re-enable closed loop back on there, as long as we've gotten it within two or three uh, percent, you know, on the bottom end there, the O2 sensors will fix it, will update the long-term fuel trims. That also means though, whenever you are done doing speed density tuning and you put the O2 sensors back into operation, you re-enable closed loop, you need to make sure and go into your scanner and reset those long-term fuel trim tables. If you do not, they will throw your fueling off for a while and it will look like, oh, wait a second, I just had very good fueling on this last tune that I downloaded. Now that I've put these back on, my fueling's all over that place because it's re-enabling those tables that were probably off are adjusted for a different kind of situation. So we clear those out and we let the short terms propagate a new long-term fuel trim table. So hopefully that's not been too much information. I kind of shotgun a lot of it at you as far as open loop and closed loop goes, why we tune in open loop, when closed loop's good, all those different situations. So I want to thank you for stopping by. We've got some awesome videos coming up. I've got a video coming up on transmissions. We're going to dive into uh, probably the 6L80 on the Gen 5s, which I know you guys, listen, you guys with the 4L80s, I will get there. I promise you. It's a little bit easier to touch on the Gen 5 stuff. It's not as in-depth as it is on the Gen 3 and Gen 4 stuff. But so there's going to be some transmission videos coming out here soon. Uh, let me think. We're going to have another pulley swap in preparation of uh, the Superado twin charging setup. So right now the pulley that's in there runs up to 13 PSI. We sure as heck don't want to do that with a turbocharger on there. So we're going to uh, go in with a bigger one that runs about 6 or 7 PSI if I remember right in preparation to throw some boost on the front end of that. And on top of that, uh, we've got videos for the uh, the uh, Super Auto coming out. I'm getting ready to install the airbox. I got some decals to slap on here to make it nice and pretty. Uh, that'll be coming out this week. And honestly, that's falling behind because I keep on ordering the wrong parts or I get the wrong parts because the descriptions from the guys in China don't make a lot of sense. Whenever you tell me it's a T4 flange, I expect it to be a T4 flange, not a T3, T4 flange. So I finally had to break down on Speedway and order a T04 flange to make sure that I got the proper ones that I could see the measurements from so I can mount the turbo. That'll be here tomorrow. There will be some Super Auto videos coming up in the next couple days. I am planning on having the turbo mounted by Friday afternoon. I don't know if the oil will be done, uh, but I'm going to drop the pan hopefully Friday and get the uh, return welded on. Uh, if I get the... Uh, feed lines in. I have, I'm still waiting on the hose for the feed lines. I got about everything else. I did have to order a new sandwich adapter for the oil feed lines because I ordered one for what I knew, which turned out to be an LSX feed or uh, oil sandwich adapter. I'll be giving that away in a future video. So, uh, it, you know, and then we'll be doing drawings for some of the other stuff. There's going to be a lot of stuff. Uh, I've got a, a stack of crap getting built up over in the corner that I'm going to just make you guys take off my hands. Some of it's pretty nice. Some of it's kind of junk, but hey, if you don't want it, you don't have to take it. If you haven't already subscribed, you, you, you've got to be a part of this. I appreciate all the new subscribers, man. We're getting new people every day. Lots of great feedback. You guys are the best. Uh, you know, I appreciate all the support, all the questions out there. If you've got more questions, make sure and hit up the comments to this video. Uh, any other video, I'm trying to pay attention to. There's apparently a community tab on my uh, homepage thing there. If you go over there, I put a post on with a uh, poll. This video resulted from that. But if you throw something up on there, I'll eventually see it too. But, uh, you know, if, stop by the uh, homepage every once in a while. There might be some polls on there and uh, because I might get some feedback for you guys for some stuff that we want to see next. If you like this video, throw a thumbs up. If you don't like it, throw a thumbs down. But do me a favor. If you throw a thumbs down, go down in the comments. Tell me what you don't like about it. Tell me what I can do better to make sure I'm bringing you guys the most quality content out there to help you out with your tuning needs, performance stuff, 
all kinds of just silly crap. Who knows what we're going to get into. Things are going to get a little bit out of hand here soon. So make sure and stick around. And as always, thanks for stopping by the garage.